Hi friends, my name is Molly. I am the founder and chiropractor at Living Adjusted Family Wellness Center. And today with us, I have Lei. She is a pillar in the Maui community and she is a Hawaiian studies teacher here on island. And she's gonna share with us a little bit about Hawaiian traditions um, and what the community is doing to support the native people. So Lei, welcome. Thank, Thank you so much you. for being here. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Um, tell us, we'll start by telling us a little bit about yourself and your background okay. and maybe your upbringing. Yeah, so I was born and raised here on the island of Maui. Uh, I travel a lot, but tradition, coming home to Maui was always very important. Mm. I thought with my grandmother and my mother, my mom and dad lived here most of their lives. Cool. I moved away, but coming home, home will always be Maui. So we share quite a bit of traditions in our home from Christmas to the New Year's, um, the different events that come up in honor of Kuhio, which is uh, the founder of the Department of Hawaiian Homelands, so he established that. And um, we've had different fundraisers that have supported our local people here in Hawaii cool. and on our homestead. We, I live on Pogukalo homestead, which is Wailuku, Waehu, and um, just that particular homestead, that's the first homestead here on Maui Beautiful. for Hawaiians to be able to um, lease the land mm -hmm. and they own their home, but not the land. Um, we, you know, every year they have Kuhio festivals. Sadly, this year, because of some things that have happened, we were able to do so, but we did. Uh, I say, I think it's a interesting thing how traditions have come up where because of certain things that happen, mm -hmm. we can do things that we've been taught when we were younger, like going over to families to find out how how they're doing totally seeing them in person correct yeah. yes beautiful sweet so i know you brought some stuff to share I with us did. today um do you want to where do you want to start sure. can you talk about the lace this First, beautiful gift so, so you honored. know tradition is when you go and you're invited you give a makana makana is a gift and so you know, to make a lei, a lei means many different things. Mm -hmm. A circle continues as you go on and on and on. Um, a lei for me, being that this was um, a very special time for me, to make it and to give it, it's more of an honor to me to mm -hmm. do that. And that the word is aloha. So that aloha is... People say it's a hello, goodbye, greetings, and all of that. But the main purpose and the main meaning of aloha is love. So I, I teach my kids that all the time at school. When I do teach them, that's my first lesson. What is aloha? How is it for you and your family? It is a good feeling inside of you that you share. It is just not just one word. It means so much as far as lay giving and lay receiving. Beautiful. I love that. <laughs> what else did you bring for us well, today? For my family, a tradition of doing arts and crafts, working with our hands. Um, this is, I would say, four, five generations of different things that we add. Um, lohala or pandanus is the leaf that we use and the leaf is dried it is usually green um, some are darker green than others mm -hmm. and then it's dried and after it's dried we clean it it's a process it takes mm -hmm. a while <laughs> we clean it we take up the thorns we soften it mainly with a scissors or something you know so it doesn't break and then we weave it. So we have a star here, a different kind of star. Um, on the stars, there's rosettes. The rosettes are actually from the ulu tree. Okay. Um, so there's these little 
pieces that come off of the ulu tree. I'm not sure exactly what it's called. And um, we soften it by adding water and then you twist and then you can make the rosettes. Beautiful. Um, there's a pineapple. There's pineapples. So there's a wreath. Cool. And then a little ball and different kind of stars. So are you making these um, every Christmas? Well, okay. every Christmas, usually my grandma or my mom would make. Oh, cool. And I would just kind of help them out. But last Christmas and for my children's ho'olaulea, they also, for their school fundraiser, I made my first um, Christmas tree to donate to the silent auction. Cool. And then little ornaments I would give away to the teachers or I would um, attach it to my presents mm -hmm. for Christmas. Mm -hmm. And I find that because my grandmother and my mom had made ornaments throughout the year, they didn't only give ornaments Just for, for Christmas. Christmas. They yeah. gave it throughout. I love that. And um, people buy the trees um, at a fundraiser that my Auntie Hoku Lani Hope Padella usually has. She usually has a Christmas one, but this year she had a February, so kind of like a, I want to say Valentine's oh, kind perfect. of festivity. Yeah. And um, we love to share whatever we can. So in the schools, I usually make the startup of a weave, which is very simple. If I can yeah, share show. Mm -hmm. yeah, show us. So this is a picture of my grandmother. She's my inspiration. Okay. And then this is a picture of my mom. So both of them have passed. Okay. My mom just passed um, last year, but it's, you know, something if I can do to carry on the mm -hmm. traditions that makes me even feel closer to her. So thank you for bringing them in here. You're welcome. So this is a startup. Mm -hmm. And what it is, is just four pieces and I entwine, and then I would cut it into different shapes, which would be something similar to this star or this star, or even with this particular um, piece of loha, I could make a fish, I could make a star, I could make a basket. So this is the startup of most of the weaving that we do. Cool. What's yeah. the significance behind the weaving? So weaving, you know, there's there's many different reasons why people have woven different things in Hawaii. Um, they didn't have rugs like mm -hmm. we have now, so they wove them for their mats. They also did it for um, house sightings, so inside, so okay. to make their house really, really nice. Baskets to carry things, um, fishing even. So the mm -hmm. holes between the baskets, would the oh, water wow. would go in and then the fish would stay in. There's so many different oh. reasons why they would weave a basket or they would carry things in the baskets and different baskets were used for different reasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. So that's a tiny basket. I love it. <laughs> that's so cute. Um, so tell us a little bit about the Hawaiian Studies class that you offer okay. here at Maui. So I teach Hawaiian Studies at an elementary school and I usually teach between second graders and third graders, sometimes uh, younger or older depending on what they have me do special projects on. I teach them from language, arts and crafts. I teach them about plants. Beautiful. I teach them about Hawaiian values. Mm -hmm. um, I really enjoy teaching them music and hula. Mm -hmm. Very, very simple, but it seems to attract their attention the most when we start to do hula and music. So it's- There's something powerful about that. Definitely. The story behind the movement yes. and, the, and the music. Yes. It's really enjoyable seeing them hula. Because after I teach them, I say, okay, it's your turn all by yourself. Oh. And they're like, we forget. So I said, it's okay. When you forget, I'll just prompt you a bit by showing you whatever the other motion is. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, you're going to remember later on in the long run. And they have. It's really, really nice to see 
high schoolers. Um, they, I've been teaching Hawaiian studies on and off for about 10 years now. Mm-hmm. That. But that's like so part-time. I really wish I could do it more. It's just that, you know, other things come up and tell I have them. other jobs too. Yes. So tell us more. <laughs> yeah. Tell us about your other jobs. What are you doing in the community right now to support so, the Hawaiian housing? So the Hawaiian housing initiative has come up many, many years. And it's strange how I was doing it for many years before. And um, I worked for a construction company that built homes on the homestead. So up in Waihuli, so up in Kula. And then we had two homes down at um, Waihuko 2. And one at Waihuko 1, I believe. Or we did some renovation in there. And coming back to Maui, I decided that I wanted to, you know, help again. And I work with the nonprofit organization which is Paupena and they have given me the opportunity to start up a new business mm-hmm. and new business plans and they are so supportive and I'm really excited because I can actually um, contribute to my community in that way mm-hmm. and working with the county is going to be very exciting with their sustainability mm-hmm. and also with um we also going to be doing gardens awesome. in and around the container homes so we do have a, a few grants that are in and most likely we'll get it and i'm so excited yay so what's yeah. the vision so our vision is container homes um our container homes will probably be up and going, I'm praying by September. Okay. We already have um, construct contractors. We have electrical contractors, uh, general contractors. We are excited to move into um, two different things. So solar, we're looking for, we are still looking for solar people. Um, and we are also looking to be able to create our own uh, vibe water. So mm-hmm. there is this, Auntie Kekoa has it at her house. So it's this big machine that it just draws in water. And so we're hoping that that can sustain them. If not, we got to put in water lines. Mm-hmm. And so we, we know we're going to have to put septic, either mm-hmm. septic or um, sewer. So we're still... So some of the, like, behind-the-scenes mm-hmm. stuff still to figure out. Yes. Who does, who does this benefit specifically? So we are hoping that anybody can benefit from it. Um, Native Hawaiians mm-hmm. is our first priority. And after we do the model home, so we're planning to do four model homes... So one is a one bedroom, one is a two bedroom, and then the other two are storage. One is a storage one, and then the other one is for farming. So oh. that would probably be like whatever they decide to put in. Mm-hmm. Um, we are able to get a few from Matson. So Auntie Kick was writing um, some letters to them in regards to grants so that Beautiful. they can provide us with. Um, some containers that we can start figuring out what you want them building homes definitely that is insane that's awesome we're we're excited we i've had this idea for over 10 years when we had worked on the homestead before and um it kind of it didn't never leave me it just it's just not the right timing at that time but i think it's gonna be really Great for people, um, mm-hmm. affordable, uh, sustainable, and hopefully they are able to come and help us because what we want them to do is we want them to learn mm-hmm. what they can and take it back and share it with someone else. Mm-hmm. And that's such a great Hawaiian thing to do because whatever I've learned from my grandparents, my mom and my dad, aunties, uncles, whoever, I teach whoever I can. Mm-hmm. And... Um, I still have students that come back and tell me. Oh, that's so special. Hey, cool. I remember that song. Oh. You know my sister singing that song now? She's in your oh. class. So it, it, you know, it full circles. 
And it makes me feel so great to be able to do that. Keeping that alive. Definitely. It's amazing. It's nice to hear them say that to you. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Is there anything, do you want to share us, with us a little bit about like what your grandma taught you besides the weaving and the lay making? There's so, so much many she, things. What are, she what are taught. some things mm-hmm. in your heart? So talking about how things have changed over the past couple months and thinking about everybody slowing down. She always told us, slow down, knowledge is power. If you have a little bit, share with whoever you can. And so I've learned that value from her and from my mom and from other aunties and uncles. So just, I would say within the last couple weeks, I've been so blessed that we were able to give things that we've had that we didn't have to use like we don't okay we're gonna get rid of this we're gonna get rid of that or whatever and um after i blessed someone with this i must have gotten like three or four things that i needed Mm -hmm. Uh, fruits and vegetables are so amazing when i'm like oh we ran out of salad guys and i'm talking to my kids (laughs) and they're like okay it's okay we'll just eat this fruit this Mm -hmm. and that you know and um it actually comes full circle and you get blessed way more so the opportunities to share that's my like i share when i have when i can i feel that from you and i and i get back more than i Mm -hmm. even shared um so we're also when i talk about my grandma i talk about how she taught me how to make lace Mm -hmm. um how she taught me that no matter what other people have never envy what they have because you have just as much Mm -hmm. and we think about our economy and we think about where we live we live in hawaii we should so enjoy everything Mm -hmm. we have in the ocean um also up in the mountains Mm -hmm. so my children and i we love to go down to the ocean and walk around and do things and then also up go hiking totally and whatever kind of plants we can get we would be able to bring home and we plant it in our garden i love that yeah so so what's in your garden right now oh my goodness my garden's full of things i love it plants many plants that my grandma had planted so we have two really big cuckoo nut trees okay awesome Um, I have four mango trees, I have two ulu trees, and those are my bigger ones. I have a uh, three plumeria trees. Beautiful. Small little herbs mm-hmm. here and there. Uh, my daughter wanted to try and plant carrots. No. Um, we're gonna look around and grab more things, but um, tea leaf, like oh. our smaller shrubs and plants. So tea leaf. I have several different kind of flowers, also uh, ferns. It's I, it. I can make things with what I have at home. So if somebody that. says, "Hey, I need a lay," I'll be going out there picking ferns. Yeah, and, from your backyard. From my backyard. So and magical. Is it? Are you on a homestead that was passed on to you? It is. Yeah, so it was my grandmother's homestead first and then it became my mom's and now it's mine and when i am able to i will give it to one of my children it's such a cool tradition it's strong here it is strong here and you know i i pray that whoever's on our wait list can get on homestead Mm -hmm. i wasn't able to get my own homestead during the times that I had tried because of my blood quantum and so working with different organizations and planning on how to change certain things because there aren't as many Hawaiians that have 50% Hawaiian Mm -hmm. anymore Um, to lower the blood quantum it takes time and Mm -hmm. going through legislature and I've been in that process of helping others you know kind of make changes for the now totally and that was like almost 40 some odd years ago that um, my grandma got her property. Okay. She was old already, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm like, okay. She lived till she was 90 years, 93 years old. Mm-hmm. But to enjoy it for that amount of time compared to what 
if people had it earlier. Right. And we do have Hawaiian homelands that can be utilized. Just infrastructure is the biggest thing that people look at. Okay. What's mm-hmm. the process for those of us who aren't Hawaiian and don't actually know like what goes on in the, in the, in the background that way? So the process is um, there's a Department of Hawaiian Homelands, and you would go there to get your application. I got my application just because and then found out that when we go down to blood, um, the blood quantum, you have to have enough genealogy to support who your parents are, grandparents. I think it's now six or seven generations back that you have to prove mm-hmm. how much blood quantum you have. And um, you're not, not too many people have 50%. Mm-hmm. So lowering it, it it will take some time for us to be able to lower it Mm -hmm. after that you submit your application and proof of identification who you are they go through the process they look at the names and then they qualify you yes you're qualified then they send you a letter the reason why i know the process is because i went through the process even if i wasn't able to Mm -hmm. um i just recently talked to my aunt which she does genealogy my mom also did genealogy and my mom helped a lot of people get onto Mm -hmm. hawaiian homelands um my aunt said you know what we do have enough like she she told me go and ask certain part, you know, people that do different things. She said, I'm not sure why your mom didn't want you to have, but we do have enough. I do have enough, 50%. My children have enough. Um, I think they're about 63 or 64% because I could track down from my mom's side only um, and then their dad's side and they're able to register. So I have one son that did apply for Hawaiian Homelands and he's on the wait list now. Beautiful. I'm waiting for my other two that will turn of age and and then they'll apply I'll help them apply as well. Sweet. That's yes. so awesome. It's a cool program um, for the Native It is. Native I, people, pre- yeah. I appreciate when people tell me, you know, if it wasn't for Hawaiian Homelands, we wouldn't be able to mm. afford the land. And I say, you know what? That's kind of true in mm-hmm. some ways. So, yeah, I just hope that they're able to open up more land because mm-hmm. we have quite a bit of land on Maui mm-hmm. and they should be able to give whoever's on the wait list. It would be very sad, and I've known of a lot of people on the wait list that have never gotten their Hawaiian mm-hmm. homelands and have passed away on the wait list. Mm-hmm. Once you pass away on the wait list, your name goes, it just disappears. Totally. Like, and your family down to and your family is not able to get it and so that's another thing that we're trying to push through legislative um to be able to pass it down to a descendant of mm-hmm. that person that did have the 50 percent cool so what do you think that the feel of the hawaiian tradition or like where the hawaiian tra- tradition is at here on the island you know Apparently. there's a lot of different talks about different traditions Because I was a teacher, or I'm a teacher, and my mom was also a teacher, my Mm -hmm. grandmother taught Hawaiian studies as well. So I never thought I was going to teach Hawaiian studies, but I learned so much from them. The traditions, I think, vary depending on each ohana or Mm -hmm. family. I know a lot of people that they do withhold or uphold that aloha spirit. So giving and receiving of things, whether you're Hawaiian or not. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of really great friends that keep that tradition alive. Um, Hawaiian traditions, depending on the season as well. So for me, I look at tradition starting from, because I, the school year, October or September, I talk about, you know, finding out who your family is. Like, who are you? Who's your family? Mm -hmm. The traditions are many because there's so many cultures here. And I adopt a lot of those other cultures besides my own Hawaiian (laughs) culture. For instance, um, 5-5 was Boys Day. And it's really a Japanese tradition. But they, you know, they hang their little flags of 
koi, which is fish, and how many children or boys in the home, they would hang all of those. I have three boys, so at a time I had three in the house, now I only have one. So <laughs> we didn't hang koi this time, but usually I would buy them a little something, a mm -hmm. gift for them, and give them, um, you know, like extra special something oh. that day. So I made my son extra special egg omelet. That's amazing. <laughs> for him. Um, like yesterday was also Cinco de Mayo. Mm -hmm. um, I don't drink, but we <laughs> love we love Mexican food. Mm -hmm. And uh, my children and I actually had traveled to Mexico. Beautiful. So uh, that's another thing. We love to travel. Mm -hmm. So we traveled to Mexico and we found a lot of similarities in what they do mm -hmm. and what the Hawaiians do. Totally. You know? Um, Family is huge in both. In on both sides cultures, yeah I so see. big yeah so and the grandma I feel like the grandma is like the staple right yes staple just like ours family. too the grandma is the staple of our and family. good food Mexico yes. is the best oh yes we enjoy our Mexican food, even if we don't really know how to make it totally. fully, but we know a little bit. I'm like, okay, let's get the nachos out, yes. get the hamburger, and you know. Oh, I love it. So it's, um, I think those kind of traditions are so important. Mm -hmm. And um, like for my own traditions, we, we are Christian, so we celebrate Christmas. Mm -hmm. But going back to the October, Makahiki is a very big time for Hawaiians. Mm -hmm. Makahiki games, um, so what it is, is that peace time. So traditionally, there would be a time of war and a time of peace mm -hmm. during um, the seasons. It usually starts the time of peace in October. And there's this cluster of stars, which are called the Makali'i. And mm -hmm. it's the constellation in Beautiful. English term. Um, so the Makali'i would come out, the wise man or the wise person of the Aina, the land, would tell the Ali'i it is Makahiki time. And they would go around with this white banner and that would notify everybody and they would tell the people from each um, area, which would be their Ahupua'a, it's Makahiki time, mm -hmm. time to put away all our hard labors, no more war, we're going to celebrate. So celebrating consists of eating food, dancing hula, playing games, Makahiki games. Cool. Um, what do the games consist of? So Ulumaika is one of my uh, students' favorite games, and what it is very similar to bowling. Mm -hmm. um, the Just the way that you have this pohaku, which is a rock, and then you have two stakes a distance away and then there will be one person across and another person across. So one would roll the pohaku or stone between the two stakes and the other one would retrieve it mm -hmm. and roll it back. And so they would roll it back and forth and hopefully they get it between the stakes. That's one That's makahiki awesome. game. Um, hay is another makahiki game which is string. The cordage that they made may have come from uh, different plants. Cool. Um, so like cat's cradle. Okay, yes, totally. My grab my mom taught me how to do one, two, three, four, six, six eye. So you would have the try it it mainly looks like a triangle. Mm -hmm. Um so you can play with the two people or mm -hmm. more or you can play by yourself i had no idea that was hawaiian tradition it That's is awesome. it's been a hawaiian tradition for as long as i know mm -hmm. that my mom's taught hawaiian studies so she taught hawaiian studies for many years and then she became the student activity coordinator cool. and um, that opened up my eyes to events <laughs> so it. that's why i'm like oh my gosh everything she did i'm doing still it's amazing yes if someone in the community wanted to know more about Hawaiian culture and mm -hmm. uh, the study of it, where would they look? You know, I always tell people to go and look under Kamehameha Publishing. Mm -hmm. So Kamehameha Publishing is, it is also the school, part of the school, Kamehameha Schools. And my two children go to Kamehameha Schools. But they have so much resources. Cool. And even the school itself, you can call the high school and you can ask them mm -hmm. if you can go in and find out certain things about Hawaiian studies, Hawaiian culture, um, genealogy, 
they are open to anybody in our community. Mm-hmm. So all you have to do is just call Commitment Schools here on Maui. We, they're located up at Pukulani. And um, I'm really happy that they have a resource library mm-hmm. for people to come. You can borrow some of their books, but some you have to just look right at. There. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's old where you have to put gloves on. Wow. And yes. That's so special. Uh, my Let's mom was able to display some of her quilting, her oh. quilting and my mom, my grandma's quilting up at Kamehameha School when they did have their, they, they do all kinds of different activities. And um, it was interesting. So yesterday I was on a Zoom with my other kumos. Um, in regards to teaching and one of the teachers came up with what did Lili Uokalani, she was our last queen, do during her time that she was Mm. imprisoned in her own home. Many of the things that she did, we are doing today. Quilting, she's still able to run, she was still able to run her um, kingship duties because people would come in she would write songs Mm -hmm. she would write to the president of the united states she would still be able to communicate a little bit with her people but i think about it as this is what's going on right i love that and how she was still motivated to do many many great things and keep keep the vision alive right correct Yes, she she was a great influence in a lot of people and must be my grandma there too because my mom, my grandma, my great grandma, they all quilted. Awesome. They sewed on the sewing machine. I was lucky to be able to sew as well and she, they quilted. I have quotes from both sides, my dad's side as well as my mom's side and I have only quilted a little bit but I think I need to go back and do those things Uncover as well. a little bit. Yes. Absolutely. I didn't get the sewing gene, my mom. My mom says oh, she really does. well. And my grandma quilts. I have some of her quilts so here even. You should try and learn them. <laughs> Pass it on to your daughter. But the, <laughs> the sewing machine is so intimidating. No. You know, I just recently taught my daughter how you to did. sew because she wanted to make masks. Oh, awesome. So I, she has her own sewing machine and I have my own sewing machine. She never used it for forever. Mm. When she was really little, she would sew by hand yeah, clothing so she, for her sure. little dolls. Oh, that's a cute. And she forgot. Like, she's like, I forgot you even had all these things. I said, your grandma used to buy you little patches and you would cut them up. Oh design clothes and she would sew by hand for these dolls it would never get off the dolls because she sewed them on On the the dolls dolls. but so she was creating that way still she was still able and then later on she would be able to do graft like little pictures of Mm. different fashion and whatnot so those things came from my grandmother Mm. she never really discussed it with my grandmother but my grandmother and my mom made clothes. Mm. Like I even have two dresses that my mom made me. And they're older fashion, but I still kept them. Because I said, that. you know what? I'm going to keep them. And cherish um, it. I, I looking, I'm looking at your macrame there. Yeah, that was a gift my, from a friend. My mom made macrame oh. things. She even um, did a lot of, oh, what is that called? Crochet. So I have crochet things that she mm. made me and little sachets that she made. She made a, a top. And I said, you know, all of this came down from somewhere. Mm-hmm. And so those are traditions of our family. Mm-hmm. Um, Mele is tradition also to sing and to hula. My grandmother was a hula teacher too. Oh, beautiful. She taught hula. My mom and I only danced hula, and I'm grateful that I can teach hula to mm-hmm. my students mm-hmm. and my daughter. My daughter took hula from my aunt. I took hula from my aunt. Cool. Um, and yeah, it's something that I'll pass on to mm-hmm. my children and my grandchildren as well. Absolutely. I love that. Thank you for sharing. Everyone. You're welcome. Is there anything else on your heart um, that you'd like 
listeners to hear or even the community I, of Maui to know? I just really feel that we live in such a beautiful place mm-hmm. and to share it and to take care of it. Um, I studied as an environmental engineer and to be able to take care of the water, mm-hmm. take care of the plants, to take care of each other, learning how to communicate effectively with you know we all there's different disagreements on different things but we can always show aloha Mm -hmm. while we are discussing certain things that's so important aloha is the foundation of Hawaii and we need to remember that I love that thank you you're welcome thank you for imparting your wisdom (laughs) I feel like there's got a lot of download it's really special so Thank you for being here. Thank you all guys for listening. Um, if they want to reach out to you, how can they find you? Well, I'll give you my email. Okay. Um, I don't have a website because yeah. I kind of, I have to wait on a little bit of things, but I'll eventually have a website, especially with the container homes coming up. So yep. we'll keep everybody posted on that information. Cool. Uh-huh. Thank you guys for listening.